Thank you very much once again, and I'm really enjoying this time here. Uh, my second talk, Vascular Access in Older Adults. These are my same disclosures. And as we all know, our dialysis population is changing over, over the past uh, few years, and, and more and more patients that are entering into the dialysis program, they are um, in, in the older population age group, and the question remains, what is the right access for these elderly patients? Uh, the key questions that when I see my new, new elderly patients that, and, and which I think we all face on a day-to-day -day basis is which should of course always applicable to elderly patients. When do we consider an alternate uh, arteriovenous access and can we justify a single venous catheter use in selected elderly patients? So the, these are the three questions. Some of the discussion or some of the points that I'm making here are likely to change based on the, when the new guidelines are released, but I try to incorporate some of the points from the new guidelines. Officially, the new guidelines have not been released, so uh, just bear with me uh, if, if things change right away in the early part of next year. So when we talk of elderly, elderly versus elderly, so what does elderly mean? By definition, it's an adjective old or age, and WHO defines elderly in the context of geosocial environment. And I think we have to keep this perspective when we talk of elderly patients. Not every elderly patient is identical. Um, more than 65 years is considered to be elderly in developed countries, but in, in developing countries, 50 years is considered as elderly. So do we really, should we really define them or define a patient by elderly, early elderly versus late elderly. And, 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 and I think there is, this, this is the uh, map that I pulled out from an average life expectancy. And as you can see in the, in, in, in the developed world, the, the life expectancy is 75 plus, but in some of the underdeveloped countries, the life expectancy is as low as 45. So, Yes, if a 45 year old person uh, in, in Africa may have the, the physiologic structure of an elderly person who is 70 years old in a, in a developed country. So we have to keep that perspective in mind when we, when we talk about uh, what kind of access one has to consider. So chronologic age is definitely different compared to biological age. And, and over, again, over the last decades, uh, the physical activity of an elderly, elderly person has clearly changed. Even amongst the, amongst the diabetic patients, uh, the functional independence in elderly patients with diabetes has been more useful by approximately 15 years. So we should not just be very biased about the chronologic age and, and think about not trying to place an AV fistula. Um, there are studies in the general population that have shown that the cerebral arteries are more useful by approximately 20 years in males and 10 years in females. So, so clearly as the medicine is advancing, as our lifestyle is changing, and as things are improving in general, the, the general population is living longer than, than before. So with that little uh, perspective in the background, uh, should we really be taking a decision as a population-based decision, or should it be a patient-centered approach? Uh, when we talk about creating a vascular access, whether it should be a fistula, a graft, or a venous catheter. And here are two patients. Uh, Mr. John, he's 76 years old. He's diabetic. He has bad heart with an ejection fraction of 20%. He's had two strokes. He lives in a nursing home and he barely manages his activities of daily living. So here, and, and, and another patient, Mrs. Mary, She's 76 years old, she's hypertensive, she's active, she volunteers about 30 hours per week, and she's very independent, she drives around. So now, should these two patients be considered the same because their age is same? Should we create the same kind of fistula, or should we create the same kind of access in both of these patients, or should we evaluate them independently? And, and I'll try to answer this this question uh, as, as an, I would do it in my practice. Uh, the data is, is, is not very clear cut, but we still have to individualize these patients, uh, at least based on some of the facts that we have uh, available in, in, in 
So the act of selection in elderly is again these questions are key when we when we talk about what is the right access. Is a fistula better than an AV graft? Is a fistula ideal for all elderly patients? When should we one create an AV access? Is there a time frame when we should think about creating an AV access? And and does the age matter at all? So now this is old guidelines and this is soon going to change. But but again with the new guidelines. Um, not a whole lot is going to change as far as the preference for an access. So it, it, the old guidelines from 2006 clearly states that the fistula is the preferred access whenever possible. And, and that still remains true that fistula is still the best access when it is possible. And the big question is when it is possible. That question has to be answered. And then there are acceptable other access types like the AV, AV graph or long-term catheters. Uh, why this desire for more AV fistulas? And again, we've had a lot of discussion during the early sessions that we had, that it, it tends to last longer, provided it's functional. So the key here is it has to be functional. Just creating an AV fistula just because you have a buzz does not mean that that access is usable. It has to be usable. And, and once it becomes usable compared to all the other types, uh, the access AV fistula has less maintenance, it has less infections, and it provides better dialysis. So th there is no question from the literature, from the evidence that we have, that if a fistula works, it is better, it, it's one of the best access that we have. Uh, and again, this is data from USRDS that clearly shows that um, amongst uh, the three different types of commonly used accesses, infection is least, sepsis is least, the incidence of thrombosis is less, and the requirement between AV graft and AV fistula for intervention is less. So this is true provided the access is functional. And this was the message that the fistula first breakthrough initiative promoted when the, when, when the entire initiative was established. Uh, in, in 2003. And the emphasis then was maximize AV fistula in all suitable patients. Now, oftentimes this has been misunderstood that suitable, suitable means if a fistula is not the right access, you don't have to necessarily push through. And that was also always true even when the fistula first initiative was uh, put in place. The key was minimize the dialysis catheter use and avoid all types of vascular access complications whenever possible. So with, with these three mission statements from fistula first, oftentimes it was misinterpreted as everybody should get an AV fistula, and that really is not true. And if we look back, now fistula first is no longer keeping this dashboard as updated as, as, as they used to until 2017. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, what I want you to focus on is the number of AV fistulas in the elderly age group, the 70 to 79 and 80 and over, and it's still more than 60% in the United States amongst all networks. So these are the entire state, United States is broken down into 13 networks, and, and this is a composite of all these networks together. So yes, even in the elderly population who are more than 70, the fistula rate is pretty high. So it is possible to create AV fistula in the elderly population. And if you look at it more uh, into details, as you can see, uh, in the 70 to 79 and 80 and plus, between 2016 March and 2017 March, it's consistently over 60%. In, in the 80 years old, it's almost close to 60%. So that, that's a pretty robust data that we have that, yes, AV fistulas can be created in elderly populations. Just because a person is 75 years old, you don't have to uh, switch to a graft or, or a catheter as a, as a primary access. And this was also shown earlier on that long-term benefit of a AV fistula is survival benefit is definitely better compared to most patients who have central venous catheters. And, as, and you can see here, the top line is patients who only had AV fistula, they survived longer over 58 months uh, period after they were initiated with AV fistula. The middle line is the graph that shows patients who had catheters for some time and then got switched to an AV fistula. 
and the least survivors were in patients who had just the catheter. And this was a fairly large study of 67 years old and higher in, in about 120,000 patients. So clearly, AV fistula is the better access, and, and there is there is a clear clinical evidence. Uh, another study that was recently published by my close friend from uh, University of Alabama in Birmingham, where they looked at close to 9,500 patients. These patients were initiated, all of them were initiated with catheters. About 7,500 patients got AV fistula, and about 2,000 got graft. And, and as you can see, the patients who had AV fistula, the mortality was lower compared to the patients with graft, but it comes with a cost. Patients who had AV fistula, they had longer catheter duration compared to the patients who had grafts. So yes, so this is the same same information here. That over a six month period after they got either an AV fistula or an AV graft, the patients who required central venous catheters was consistently more in the AV fistula group compared to the AV graft group. So yes, there is a price that has to be paid. So Fistula, yes, it's possible in an elderly patient. Fistula does have a long-term benefit as far as survival is concerned, so there is a mortality benefit. And, and fistula is ideal in an access in an elderly population when it's possible, but it does come with a cost. Uh, is it ideal for all elderly patients? That's the question that we need to answer. So we have to start thinking in terms of patient-centric rather than population centric. So we cannot have a generalized guideline that fistula should be done in all patients, especially in the elderly population. We have to think in terms of is it the right access for a particular human patient. And the new guidelines is exactly going to focus on that. It's going to it's, it, 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 the, the mission statement of the new guidelines is going to be right patients, right access, right time, and right reason. And, and, and we will go over some of this in more details tomorrow when I talk about the highlights of the new guidelines. So do we need to think differently while planning an access in a rapidly growing elderly CKD population? And so clearly we need a patient-centric rather than a population-based approach. And there are several challenges. We all know there are several challenges when it's time, when, it comes, when, it's, a time, when it's a question of creating an AVIC fistula in the elderly population. Uh, we have to think of several factors which we don't generally think of in, in a younger patient. When it's an older patient, we have to think of life expectancy. How long is the patient going to survive? Does that make a difference? On an average, a fistula takes about six, eight weeks, 12 weeks for it to mature. If, you're, if the patient's life expectancy is six months, is it really worth putting in an AV fistula in that patient? Functional status, is the patient independent? Is the patient bed bound? Is the patient going to have any quality of life? And those are the questions that really become relevant. And then elderly populations have multiple comorbidities, peripheral arterial disease, cardiovascular disease, whether it's an acute start, the artery crash landers, or whether it's a chronic progression where you have time to plan, think, educate, inform the patients. Uh, and then, of course, we have to keep patient preferences in mind. Does the patient want to go through multiple surgeries? Does the patient like needle stakes? And those are key issues that really become relevant when we talk about taking decisions from a patient's perspective. Uh, and, and then there are social factors that are the family supports, is the patient in the nursing home? What, what else, else is going on from a social perspective? So the challenges are to boil all of those down into a narrow four segments. Uh, likelihood of progression of ESRD versus death in the elderly population. That's the major question that one has to answer, which, 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 which equals to what is the life expectancy? Can you, can you predict whether the patient is going to live longer? It will depend on what else is going on with the patient. What are the other comorbidities that the patient has? Does he have a terminal malignancy? Does he have bad strokes that the patient or bad cardiovascular disease? With an ejection fraction of 20%, is that person going to live long enough? Uh, risks and benefits of the type of vascular access. If the fistula is not going to mature and will require three, four, five interventions for it to mature, is it really worth putting in a navy fistula or just putting in a graft and get going in two weeks or three weeks' time so you cut down on the duration of catheter? And again, what does the patient want? After discussing all this, if there is time to discuss, does the patient really want 
to go through all of these hardships. And this was an elegant study that showed that as the patients age, as the patient starts aging, the risk of death is much more than the risk of reaching end stage renal disease or the risk of needing dialysis therapy. So if, if, if the, the another study that really showed this was asking a simple question, will the patient survive six months? And that's the question asked to the family members, that's the question asked to the close physicians that the patient is following up with, and if the answer is consistently no, the patient is not going to survive more than six months, that was shown statistically very relevant and, and very predictable. So a simple question like that can help make some decisions or help decide which direction to move into. Uh, so life expectancy and trade-off with vascular access clearly plays a major role when planning and access in an elderly population. The net benefit here uh, of different access strategies will vary between individuals as a function of life expectancy and quality of life from patient's perspective. Uh, and at least a minimum life expectancy of one year should be something that should be kept in mind before planning an atrial fistula placement. If we look at if we look at it in the long term, that atrial fistulas do have a benefit in, in the mortality survival benefit. In the short so short term, does AV fistula differ from AV graft? So even if the patient's survival <coughs> is expected to be around 12 months or 18 months, does, does one need to place or plan for an AV fistula? And, and so this question was answered by a retrospective study where the, the outcome was measured 12 months of survival in patients who had AV fistulas and AV grafts and about 16,000 patients. Uh, they also looked at the number of repeat procedures that had to be performed to keep either the AV fistula or AV graft open. The number of times the central venous catheters had to be placed each time an intervention was done. So if the, the, the AV fistula got thrombosed, it's not usable, you put in a catheter, got another fistula in place, so now you have a catheter duration time, and, and whatever other procedures are required to get the fistula going. Uh, so that add it on to the morbidity. Every time a patient gets a catheter, it adds to the morbidity. And then overall survival benefit at 12 months. And uh, no surprise, if, if you look at the number of interventions required between graft, uh, graft and fistula, so the red bar is graft, blue bar is fistula, the number of interventions required in the fistula patients was higher. So that, means that can be interpreted as poor quality of life. Each time there's an intervention, patient has to go to the hospital uh, or a facility, either stay in the hospital or get an outpatient procedure that means extra time in the hospital, more hardship for the family members, more hardship for the entire social structure that the patient lives in. Number of catheters were again higher or almost equal in the whole group, but when we combined the two, uh, the number of interventions catheters together was much higher in the graph, in, in the visual group compared to the graph group. And when we looked at the mortality at 12 months, really there was no difference. AV graft and AV fistula group had really no, no difference in survival benefits. So AV fistula, at least in the short term, really does not have any benefit. So if you look at life expectancy for the short, why not just put a graft and, and, and avoid all the extra procedures? Is there an advantage, true advantage of AV fistula over AV graft in the elderly population from the other complications that you see? Uh, infections, so this was another study I just brought in the conclusions, this study from Kidney International from 2012. Uh, two to 100 functioning AV fistulas were required or were similar to preventing an, one episode of AV graft infection. So again, that's a huge number. Survival benefit from another study published in 2013 None of the patients over 80 years, uh, the increased use of central venous catheters in AV fistula patients compared to AV graft patients. So, the same, same study, I mean, same kind of conclusions short term benefits, infection benefit, clearly no difference between AV fistula and AV graft. Uh, so, this is something that we published uh, as, as a group in KIS a few years ago. Uh, and, essentially highlighting the point that 
renal replacement therapy and supportive care should be the primary discussion when the patient reaches end stage kidney uh, disease. And, and then all options need to be considered before one starts thinking in terms of placing an uh, AV fistula. If we decide to move on to creating an AV fistula again, that's not an easy, easy road to walk. I mean, there are again multiple challenges. Surgical skills are required, the risk of skinny syndrome is very high, selecting an ideal site, cardiac rhythm devices, cardiac diseases are much common in the elderly populations, and, and uh, gender. Older male patients, there is evidence that older male patients tend to have a, a higher uh, success rate with functioning tissue as compared to older females. Um, calcified vessels, which again can be uh, a major barrier to access to uh, primary tissue failure. These patients have cardiac diseases, so having cardiac disease, they have central, uh, have uh, cardiac devices, all kinds of rhythm devices. Again, it's a little dual chamber with defibrillator, a number of leads along with the catheter will cause a lot of crowding in the central veins leading to central vein stenosis. And, and with central vein stenosis, success of AV fistula maturation is going to be lower. Un unnecessary vascular access surgeries. Again, this was one study where, where they looked at the number of AV fistulas that were required, that were created, and it it led to a number of uh, fistulas that were actually used. So patients died before the fistula was even used. And in the 80 to 100 years old, they showed that five fistulas were created, only one was used. Four patients died before they even needed dialysis. Fistul ischemia and steel syndrome, they have peripheral arterial disease. This can be a very high complication in, in the elderly patients, especially if uh, upper arm fistula is created. And, and patients making decisions and preferences, that has to be really kept in mind. Essentially, patient experiences, testimonials from other patients, and, and even observations of struggles of other patients with fistula can deter patients from choosing a fistula. So we have to keep all of that in perspective before making the final decision. So coming back to the original question, Mr. John, who's really uh, has multiple comorbidities and, and he cannot really support himself, would any fistula be a right answer? Probably not. Uh, his, in his case, uh, a forearm AV graft or even a central venous catheter would be acceptable. Whereas in Mrs. Mary, it certainly would make sense. She is 76, but she is like a 55, 60 year old, 76 lady. So creating an AV fistula should be the next, the next uh, option, should be the best option offered to her. And, and lastly, uh, the key factors to consider in the initial decision should include comorbidities, functional status, frailty of the patient, life expectancy. And, and this is another flow chart that, that we published uh, clearly takes into account uh, palliative care that should always be discussed in elderly patients. Uh, new end care guidelines, just, just to re-emphasize right access for the right patients at the right time for the right reasons. Uh, just to, sum, to summarize and to conclude, vascular access selection in elderly clearly remains a challenge. We have to individualize patients. AV fistula remains a preferred access even in the elderly in the right patients. Successful planning requires team effort. Uh, individual patient comorbidities, preferences, and expectations need to be evaluated and considered while planning and access. An AV graph or, or a central venous catheter can be the right access to the right patients. Thank you very much for your time.